Okay, so uh, what I want to do in this video is talk about how we can actually treat the output of our model uh, in order to get the best prediction possible. So uh, we can do uh, a simple algorithm and uh, just take uh, the best prediction at any given point of our model and use that and uh, build up the uh, and build up our final prediction. Or we can use a slightly more refined method uh, called a beam decoder. So in this one, we're using a log a log beam decoder, uh, which uses the log outputs from our model. And uh, this lets us track uh, a couple of different possibilities or a couple of different kind of like hypotheses for our output at the same time and uh, keeping those in mind for our final output. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the output format because I didn't go into that in great detail, detail in the last video. Um, so looking at how these were generated, uh, what, um, we had this line here, which uh, determines how our, you know, our kind of input sample uh, is generated. Um, so here we have uh, a hop length of 10 milliseconds and a window length of 25 milliseconds. What that means is our each of those um, those channels that we're putting in, so those 13 channels, uh, are generated uh, using a window length of 25 milliseconds. So um, looking at the frequencies uh, in in that 25 millisecond window, and then moving that window 10 milliseconds, so we get like these uh, these sort of slices of each part of our audio uh, audio file. Uh, our model then outputs a probability, um, like a normalized probability, or in this case, uh, it's the log probabilities uh, for each uh, for each uh, output target. So we're we're using the uh, letter uh, the letter model here, but uh, you can do this the same for the phonemes model. Um, I have this test function here, so that's going to let us use the debugger the uh, when you're actually using uh, Torch to make an actual prediction. Uh, then the debugger breaks down. But uh, in this case, uh, I just pickled a value, so we're going to load that. Um, so we're using this test function here. Uh, so our first um, output, and this is our target sentence uh, that we can see here. So we went through uh, here, and we have our prediction, uh, which is stored in here, and we have our target. So our target, because we're using letters, is this here, uh, our two tar and uh, these are like the, the relationship between uh, the, the integer output and the, uh, and the letters that will actually be used to make the final sentence. Um, this none character, so I think I touched on it in the last video, is the blank character. So uh, that determines um, how sort of a new character is treated. So because we're having um, an output from our model you know, every 10 milliseconds, uh, there, there won't be enough uh, letters or there, there are going to be way more outputs than there actually are letters. Uh, so this blank character is kind of what um, lets us detect duplicates, uh, or, or rather se separate duplicates from one another. So let's say that I'm saying a word, uh, and I say the word uh, as, and it predicts the, the letter A several times in a row. Uh, those, uh, those predictions will be, will be merged into one prediction, and we'll just get one single letter A. Uh, what the none character does, or how it's used, is it, it is um, if there were a none predicted, uh, and then the letter A was repeated, so there's not many uh, repeating A's in English, but let's say that I was saying, you know, attention or something. And, uh, and then, so it would predict the first T, and then hopefully we would get a none, and the, sec the second T would be predicted, and that would let us actually spell the word correctly. Uh, so that's kind of a brief overview of what the none character is for. Uh, we'll probably see um, it on a deeper level as we go through. Uh, what this exploded function does. So let's take a look at that. Hopefully you guys kind of like understand what the output looks like, or I can actually, um, so our pred here is just uh, a list with the output, and then we just printed uh, the actual target. So pred uh, zero dot shape, give us the shape of the output. So we have our 29 characters, and then we have uh, like 796 windows or 796 predictions of those 29 characters. Uh, so we go into exploded, and we're building our output uh, for step and prediction. Right, so we're just saying that uh, guess equals uh, the max, so step arg max. So I think that for most of them, um, if we look at step, uh, so remember these are log probabilities. So uh, what that means is, so. Uh, the probabilities generated are usually between 0 and 1. These are simply uh, the lawn, so the natural logarithm of those values. And what that does is instead of uh, the range being from 0 to 1, uh, the range is from negative infinity uh, to 0, 
but it sort of declines very slowly. So what this lets us do, it's um, I think it's mostly a safeguard against numerical underflow, uh, because we'll see when we're doing the beam decoding, uh, but the values can get very, very small. And this is a way to uh, to keep them within a usable range that the computer can actually you know be still be accurate, uh, and also uh, keep track of uh, which prob which cumulative probability is higher. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're just doing the step argmax. Um, so the maximum here is going to be uh, our first guess, which is a blank, and uh, we're just ignoring the blanks here because yeah, I guess is not true. Um, L if show blank. Right, uh, we are showing the blanks here on the output, and then this is going to uh, finally give us a. Uh, so actually, it just probably makes more sense if I show you. Uh, so let's just get out of this function. Um, so we're going to print our exploded values, and we can see here the blanks are represented by these uh, tildes, and then um, our, our when the letter is the max prediction, it's um, it's actually shown. Uh, we have our spaces. Being predicted as well, so these spaces would uh, get merged. Usually, in fact, that's what our greedy decoder is going to do. Um, it's like a slightly more intelligent version of uh, the exploded decoder. Obviously, not showing the blanks and um, merging duplicate letters unless there's a blank between them. So the greedy decoder. Uh, let's just go into that quickly. We don't. Oh, geez. Okay, so that was actually that bug that I mentioned earlier, the torch bug. I had a leftover uh, torch term uh, used in here. I uh, got rid of that, so now we can. Go back to where we were before. Uh, here is our target. Here's our exploded output that we had before. So we can see kind of how that correlates. We can see uh, what our best predictions are from our our like max predictions are from our models. Um, in this greedy decoder, so it's 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 very it's very similar uh, in structure to the uh, to the exploder to the exploder decoder. Um, so we're going to be going for each uh, each step in the final prediction. Uh, we're taking the we're taking the max guess, and then we're saying uh, we have this uh, previous guess term, which is tracking the last guess that was given. So in the case of duplicate letters, uh, we do not add the new letter, um, and in the case, but we we always update the previous guess. So if we get that blank term and then we get the new letter again, uh, the letter does get added to the output. So we can just head out here again. And we have our greedy, our greedy output, uh, which looks a little more, a little, a little bit more like a sentence. Uh, still not that close to our, our. Oh, sorry. Uh, red one is our target. Uh, so, uh, but we can we can also see uh, that it is following it. Um, sort of acoustically, it's getting it's. Um, you know, it 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 is getting the sense of the sounds. Um, it's something. You know, that had source back in the woods, that had its source so way back on the wads. Um, anyway, uh, so let's take a look at our beam decoder and I'll go into a little bit more detail about how that's different from uh, the greedy decoder process uh, that we have here. So we have, um, we're going to be loading our language model first. Uh, so the language model um, is going to sort of uh, lead our model towards um, it's, it's, it's going to also uh, suggest a probability for an, any given prediction given the, pre the preceding uh, character predictions. In this case, it can also do uh, phoneme predictions for a phoneme model, uh, but in this case, we're doing character predictions. Uh, this model is pretty simple. Um, it was just trained by using um, sort of n-gram, like exploding um, the source uh, data on the, on the n-grams and then finding the next uh, the probability of the next character for the source data. So just to give an example of that, looks like we have our lang model, and let's say that uh, um, we had the word, that, like a common sentence might be like uh, at, okay, um, space, uh, and then at the, let's say. Uh, hopefully I got that format right. So we can see that at the, so uh, uh, the E has an 85% chance of being the next character according to this model. Um, the I has a has a 7% chance and then there are, there are other predictions as well. Um, so that's generally what the language model looks like. Uh, so we're gonna uh, create our best beams here. 
So like I said earlier with the beam decoder, we're going to be uh, tracking a couple um, like kind of hypotheses concurrently for the sentence. Um, so that means that we're going to be taking the three most likely probabilities at, an, at any given moment and then um, and uh, examining all of the predictions against all of those uh, all of those like preceding beams and then picking the best three beams out of those and then going over to the next step is to, like the general format uh, for this algorithm. So uh, CTC log beam, let's just take a look at this class quickly. Um, it's up here. Uh, so we have our uh, a couple of variables here. The initial string uh, we have, so that's the string that actually uh, contains, um, you know, ideally the, the target or um, the string that we're building uh, as our final output. Uh, we have this PB, uh, that means probability blank and probability non-blank. Um, so the reason that those are uh, distinct from one another is uh, due to that kind of like uh, logic I mentioned earlier where the blanks are treated differently from the non-blank characters. Uh, it's important to know that for how we're, um, we're going to affect the string as uh, new predictions come up. Um, the probability of text is given by the language model and then this constant uh, this constant is just coming from the top I think this is just like a global constant that I said that or it's set on the function level but it uh, determines kind of like the weight of uh, how, how much weight we're putting on the language model versus the acoustic model uh, what else do we have here so this is setting uh, the text value uh, so you can hear we're using the the model which is our language model here and uh, we get we make a tuple from the preceding characters and uh, then we're finding the probability for the new letter. Um, and if not, then we're just giving it a probability of uh, 0.001, just a kind of an arbitrary value that I said, like uh, we don't give it, uh, maybe it was important that there's no zero here. Uh, I think that that was the case. And then uh, we can also, at some points, it's important to find the total probability. So in this case, uh, we're just adding the uh, blank probability and non-blank probability together, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, so down back here in uh, the log beam decoder, uh, we can step through. Uh, we have our ink and step and enumerate the prediction. Uh, ink will be some kind of increment, or maybe it's not used at all. It's not used at all. Um, it says it's being used somewhere though, unless it's just up in here somewhere. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I actually didn't need that. I probably had that for debugging. Um, so we're going to make this uh, beam dictionary uh, first off. So let's describe that that's another class that uh, kind of tracks um, the beams uh, and um, builds builds the like list of, uh, of proposals or hypotheses. Uh, so we have our dictionary. Our dictionary is just going to be uh, filled with strings from, um, uh, from the beam strings. And uh, then we're going to be sort of uh, merging beams into this dictionary. So in the case, sometimes beams will kind of converge on each other. Uh, so let's say that you're carrying, you know, a beam that says A and a beam that says AT and the beam that says T, uh, when, or sorry, when the beam that says A gets proposed to T, uh, that'll merge with the existing AT beam. And uh, this is kind of like how we handle those values. When, um, so when we're doing the log beam merge, uh, we have this uh, mathematical um, process here uh, where we're merging logs. Uh, so that is this function, sorry, this is a lot of information to drop at the start. Um, but we have uh, this merge logs function. So we're taking um, A and B here are the log probabilities. Uh, and then we're returning this uh, max plus, uh, plus log 1p. So what the log 1p function is, um, and then, and then the exponent of min minus max. So that's that's explained uh, in this sort of uh, in this sort of equation that I have up here in the comment. So this is the torch version of this torch log one p torch expo torch exponent. Uh, so we have this is the target expression that we want. We simply want to add uh, the two uh, the two probabilities together. But the thing with uh, logs is that there's no way to do that. Uh, you, you have that identity where uh, a log of a value uh, plus the log of another value equals um, equals the log of the product of those two values. Um, but we don't have a, simu a similar uh, identity for addition. So basically what we're aiming for here is sort of uh, putting them back to their probabilities. So exponent A plus exponent B, and then taking, uh, in this case, the natural logarithm of that value. Uh, then we have an identity where we can take out B 
uh, from that, and then we're left with one. Uh, to so that's another log identity we can take out the power so this is uh, e to the b and uh, we take out b and then we have our a minus b um, and uh, we're taking the ln of that uh, and then that transforms finally into this sort of uh, log log one plus is just is just simply a uh, ln of th of the uh, of the expression here, and then plus one, and that's just uh, a faster and slightly more accurate version of that. Hopefully that made sense. Um, where are we? Uh, we are in Beam's dictionary, so I'll explain, hopefully, if uh, anything needs further explanation, uh, a, a little further along here. Um, this uh, step argmax, uh, I want to put a, de a debugger here, because it's going to be predicting mostly blanks at the start. Uh, the start of the audio files are often blank noise for the first uh, couple samples. So we can see in this case we didn't go in, uh, so we're going to be use we're going to be predicting a blank here. Um, but let's just take a look at like what this algorithm looks like. So for BB and best beams, our best beam now, uh, we initialized it uh, with a beam with a no string. Um, the probability non-blank is zero, so that's the maximum value uh, that that we can have. Um, and then the, I just I put in kind of like a dummy value here for the text. Uh, so for the best beams, first thing is uh, we are copying the beam and um, adding the probability of a blank character here. Uh, because on, for every best beam, there's going to be uh, a, a, and for every prediction, there's going to be an associated blank probability. So that's where this copy beam comes from. And then we're going to merge in the copy beam. So this is our, I think, our first uh, best beams. So beams equals the dictionary doesn't have anything in it yet. Uh, we go into it. Uh, we find that the string is not in the dictionary. So we just add the string to the dictionary. Uh, so if we look at our self dict, we have our our um, our one uh, string in it now, which is actually blank uh, because uh, we don't have any uh, actual character predictions yet. Uh, but we but we will here. So we're enumerating through the rest of the step. The step is the is the predictions. So we're gonna have 20, uh, 29 values here. Um, so for here we have our new beam, um, and we're saying that the initial string is our uh, our best beam string, and we have our new car, which is our new character. Our character is going to be A here, uh, and since it does not equal the last car, I have this method which gives the last character in the string. Um, we're going to be adding our, we're going to be creating a new beam. Uh, the non-blank probability is equal to the total probability of the uh, of the previous string, plus the uh, and then plus uh, the probability of this prediction. Um, then we're going to be setting the language probability. So this is going to be used. Uh, so we're, this is uh, from our la our language model. Um, so now we can actually look and get uh, kind of a more useful. Look at it. So our cars are. Oh, well, actually, there there are still no characters. We're just getting the we're getting the new. Uh, uh, we're getting the new. Um, the cars are the are the tuple of uh, preceding characters, and the the new letter is actually just being uh, called in this um, in this expression here. So it's giving a 20% value, but if we were to take that, and this is kind of the probability for a blank, uh, for a new sentence, uh, the probability of each letter uh, given by our language model. So we see that they very rarely start with Z, and uh, the rest will range, you know, between like probably like 20 and, uh, and 0. Um, okay, so going back, uh, we have our new beam string. It has been um, it's being appended to with the new character, and then we can add our new beam in. Um, so similarly, this one doesn't exist in there yet. In fact, for this uh, for this for this first beam, uh, there won't be any duplicates. But in the case where there are duplicates, uh, we have a similar process to the merge log. What well, we're using the same merge log function that we saw earlier, uh, where we are sort of adding the probabilities together. Uh, so that's what I mean by merging the logs. It's like merging the probabilities together, and uh, make and uh, 
ultimately, ultimately raising the probability of, of that beam uh, within here. So we, uh, we set the probability blank to the combination of the, of the probability blanks of the new beam and the existing beam, and then same thing for the non-blank uh, in the case where they actually do merge with one another. Okay, so going back, uh, I don't think there's really anything interesting to see in this loop, uh, up until here at least. So now we have our beams, and we'll have a, uh, yeah, so it's a dictionary, and beams, dict. and yeah, we have, so each, each, um, each beam is associated with a character now from our initial blank beam. Uh, and then we're going to be getting the log best uh, n beams with our uh, with our character uh, with our character weight. Um, so what that looks like, uh, not a very complicated function. We just have the list um, list of values, so self dict values, uh, right, which are the beams, and then we're sorting by uh, by the merge logs of the of the blank probability, the non-blank probability, the weight, and then the language model probability. Reverse true, meaning that we're sorting from uh, reverse true. So we should be sorting from greatest to least, uh, rather than least to greatest. So our dlist slash n gives us, and it's going to be blank, is going to be, uh, well, we can't see it from here. But uh, the blank one would be on top and probably far ahead of the other ones. Um, I think I have this function here. Yeah, list scores. Uh, let's take a look at that. So list scores, and then we have uh, best beams. Right. So we have our absolute probability here. So for for blank, uh, for uh, T and for A. So that's the, these are our three be our three uh, best probabilities. For our first uh, for our first iteration, uh, one thing that I'd like to do here because I think the first ones are all going to be blank, um, so let's just skip that. So we're here again. We can list scores best beams. Um, it is not too different, or is it exactly the same? Sorry, I think I need to go iterate again. Right, so it's, it's simply it's not changing much. We have a new character proposed here, but in, in each case. Uh, the new beams would be generated uh, from this uh, from this top beam here, rather than uh, being generated from any of uh, any of the second or third place beams. And in each case, the blank value is still very strong. So that's why I have this function here. Is uh, we're going to be when this gets a little more interesting when we see our first uh, letter get proposed and our letter uh, prediction overtakes uh, the blank prediction. So looking at this again. Right. Uh, for our step value, we have actually t as the most likely prediction. Or, sorry, hold on. Right. So uh, what happened there is um, the the blank value was actually still the top prediction, which is why the breakpoint didn't get triggered earlier. But I think that with the language model, uh, it predicted uh, the t, which puts the t ahead in the best be in the beams. Uh, in the beams predictions, but uh, and we're only getting triggered here. I think that this argmax is actually going to be 4t, uh, so that's at 20, which sounds probably about right. Um, well, actually, uh, to target, and it indeed is t. So uh, going through here, uh, so we we have our best beam. Uh, for bb dot string, our bb dot string is t, uh, so we get a we got a repeat value here. Um, uh, but first, we're adding the probability blank. So let's take a look at a uh, at step, and we have our probabilities here again. Um, not used to this format. Uh, so our uh, blank format is still pretty high. Uh, everything else is quite a bit lower. And then if we're looking for twenty. Which should stand out. Uh, so we're at 29. So that's about. That's probably here. Or no, because it's actually. Oh, so here's 20. Uh, so I, this one is actually quite confident that it's a T. It's significantly uh, more likely than our blank character. Um, but we, in in this case, we examine um, all 
all predictions uh, for each of the beams, and all those are added, and the beams are you know all considered uh, in this algorithm. So uh, because the blank is happens in every iteration, that's here. Uh, we're going to merge that, uh, and then for each one, we're we're adding uh, new characters to uh, to our beam list. So let's skip until um, until we actually hit into here. And all right. So I wanted to uh, go to here in the code because we have a special case uh, when there is a character repeated, as we've identified with this line. Uh, so what we have to do here is we have to consider the possibility of a preceding blank character and a preceding non-blank character. Uh, in both cases, we're setting the non-blank because uh, we we have uh, a new um, a new character that we're appending, which is not a blank character. Uh, but um, in the case where the preceding character is blank, so we have our best beam probability blank, and we are adding to it our log probability of the new character, uh, that handles the case where we are repeating a character after blank. So this is uh, our probability that our current beam has a blank character at the end of it, and our new beam is going to be generated by adding this character at the end. We also have this copy beam, so this is the one, this is the case uh, where uh, there is no blank character before. So we have our new our new uh, beam being built here in this line. So with the string of the current uh, of the current beam and the language probability of the current beam, there's no need to calculate that again since uh, we're not actually appending a character. And then we're taking uh, the probability of a non-blank, uh, so the preceding character, in this case a t, and then we're also adding our log probability of the new character, which is also a t. And then we can add that in. Okay, so in the case of the copy beam, uh, we know that there already is an existing beam in that dictionary uh, with this string, so we will be able to see a merge here. Um, so just looking at self, uh, we can see what strings exist in there. So we have all of the alphabet values and then T with a lot of uh, values up until this point here. Um, and we are now uh, inputting TT. Um, Sorry, new beam dot string. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're just putting in t. That's right. Um, so, going in here, uh, this one uh, will not change. This is the blank probability, uh, but because we're adding, um, we're adding a character here, or uh, we're adding a repeat character to be more precise. Uh, our our new new beam. Um, Blank probability is actually uh, zero, or in, or for the log probability, negative infinity. So uh, that value won't change. But for this one, um, we're going to have our existing uh, non-blank probability. And then after we do our function, uh, that should be a little bit higher. So in this case, uh, it didn't change much, uh, but it did change a little. And you know, depending on the order uh, in which you add these, uh, it, it can have a dramatic effect. Um, so going back out, um, that is pretty much everything, I think. Um, I don't know what else is here. And, and then at the, at the end, finally, uh, we would have something. Uh, let's just uh, fast forward to the end. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I should have taken that out. Um, it's going to do this a couple times. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so we have our, uh, our end beam here. And let's take a look at what our string looks like. Or we can just actually exit the function. Because we're going to be printing a joined version here. And uh, so let's take a look at. Uh, greedy version and then also our, our our target and just see how they compare one 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 against each other uh, we can see that our uh, with our language model we were actually able to uh, get the that word properly rather than the tat which was uh, if you remember from the exploded predictions um, the H was not a preferred prediction, but given the language model and the acoustic model, um, the combination of the two was able to give us the more accurate that value. Uh, we see that 
the uh, the output from um, the beam decoder. Uh, in, in general, it looks a little more like conventional English, even though it's, it's still getting things wrong. Um, some of this kind of just looks like a different language, you know, it, it, it was made without regard to uh, the, the order of the letters and just uh, using that, uh, that language model to kind of guide the input uh, makes, your, uh, makes your output a little more conventional. So theoretically, if you had, you know, if you had like a perfect acoustic model, you would not need a language model. Uh, but as long as your concern is getting, you know, the best output possible, then it, um, it makes sense to use a language model and just uh, use it as heavily as, as, as you need it uh, according to the performance of your acoustic model. Okay, so uh, just to wrap up the video, I want to talk about a couple things while I run this function. This is just a function that uh, loads the model, loads some uh, training data, and then shows our uh, shows our model predictions and the greedy predictions and explosions versus the target data. So that's running down here. I'm just going to run that. Um, so a couple things about this in general. Um, what? Uh, there, there, there's a lot of variables that you can play with here, uh, depending on the accuracy of your acoustic model. Uh, the metric would, by which uh, these are these are usually measured is something called word error rate. So that's uh, more or less what it sounds like. Um, you have your target data, which has the words in a certain sequence, and then you'll have your prediction. And the word error rate, I forget exactly how the algorithm works, um, but it's not too complicated. It, 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 it essentially uh, calculates faults and how many of the correct words are there and if they're in the correct order and such and such, and then gives you uh, a word error rate. So uh, like a world-class world error rate, I think like the best models are uh, under 10% at the moment. Um, but uh, that's, um, that's kind of the metric by which uh, one uh, refines um, or like one judges uh, the performance of their model. So uh, the ways that we can, we can look at that, um, there are a couple variables that we can change right off the bat. Uh, the two outstanding ones are our language model and, uh, sorry, the weight of our language model. And then we also have the number of beams um, for our beam decoder. So as you'd expect, uh, the number of beams, so the more beams that we have, uh, the longer the beam decoder takes to run. This depends on your application and what your needs are, but also you get, um, from what I understand, you get greatly diminishing returns with the number of beams. You know, generally, even with a very low number of beams, so I have three in mine, um, but you don't need to be tracking that many possibilities uh, concurrently just because the nature of these models, they usually are uh, pretty sure about, uh, about what uh, possibilities they're proposing. Um, you don't need to be tracking, you know, 30 or 100 or whatever at once. Uh, you, can, you can go with, you know, like under 10 and you're probably okay. Uh, for my model at the moment, so one thing um, to be wary of with the language model, so the language model can give you good results in that your language becomes, um, your word sequences become more conventional according to your source data, uh, but that also takes away from the kind of like specific uh, um, predicting capabilities of your model. So when your model is predicting a, um, a, a sequence of words that, uh, that is unusual but happens to be correct, uh, then the language model is going to be preventing your, preventing your acoustic model from actually making those predictions. So you want to like exercise const uh, restraint uh, when using that variable, or you rather you want them in balance. Um, so that's uh, just an easy way that you can, um, or sorry, that, that's something you need to be wary of. Uh, when, when you're setting that, and also as your model uh, continues to progress. Um, so, uh, just looking at a couple of these quickly, uh, we can see here are uh, basically what I think is the most interesting is the comparison between um, the log beam decoder output and the greedy decoder output. Uh, in this, we can see that our language is becoming a little more accurate, a little more, uh, you know, like some of the uh, strange predictions output by the greedy decoder get broken up into actually more uh, actual into more um, conventional outputs. Um, so something like uh, you know, Rachel Mand is actually putting into Rachel, not Rachel Lind, um, but uh, Rachel Ant. So that, that's fine. But you can see that it's 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 following the general thread of what's being said. Um, one thing that I also noticed is like when you have your language model uh, constant very high and give it a very high weight, uh, it, uh, it, it has trouble adding new, uh, it, it tends to not add new characters, so your sentences will come out shorter than they should be. In this one, we can see that it's approximately following the length uh, of the sentences, uh, but when I had my character, uh, when I had that uh, constant very high, um, the sentences would come out a lot shorter. 
Um, anyway, so uh, I hope that this uh, this series was useful. I hope that uh, everything was uh, clear, and um, I hope that you guys were able to learn something. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, so thanks for watching.